In this video, we will address the question, can you diagnose cancer with a blood test? It's not uncommon to have completely normal blood work when cancer is present, especially early on. By detecting cancer earlier, our pets have a potential for cure or a better outcome. Thanks to the rapidly expanding area of research known as cancer genomics, we can use non-invasive ways to screen for cancer. Liquid biopsy is an evolving tool that allows us to find cancer early. I'm excited about this area of research and its potential benefit for our animals. See you when we get back. Cancer screening is important because it is the number one cause of death in dogs, with dogs less than two years of age more likely to die of trauma or infections. According to the American Veterinary Medical Association, cancer affects one out of four dogs and one out of two dogs over 12 years of age. Median longevity in dogs in one study was 12 years. I don't know about you, but my heart dog is turning 13. She's a Chihuahua Dachshund Rescue, both breeds do not have a high incidence of cancer, but I might consider if there was a known breed risk or familial risk, I would definitely want to be running some tests. And certainly, if I could have her longer and intervene sooner, I would absolutely do it. Currently, the biomarker assays are being researched in cats and not yet available. There is not, a, not as many studies on the incidence of cancer in cats. One UK study indicated trauma was the number one cause of death, but that was mostly outdoor cats. Um, number two came in as kidney disease, not surprisingly. And number three was non-specific or no diagnosis found. And then number four was cancer, which may be the category three, those cats maybe had cancer that was never diagnosed. Causes of cancer include damage to cellular DNA by toxins, pesticides, inflammation, and solar damage, just to name a few. The body is continually working to eliminate damaged and abnormal cells. With age, the body becomes less efficient at doing this. Dogs over eight years of age are at a higher risk of developing cancer. Susceptible breeds include the Bernese Mountain Dog, Golden Retrievers, Boxers, Flat-Coated Retrievers, and any of the giant breeds who primarily get osteosarcoma, a type of bone cancer. The most common cancers are listed here. Lymphoma affects 20% of Golden Retrievers and is the most common cancer in cats. Mast cell tumors are more common in Boxers and Bulldogs. Osteosarcoma Osteosarcoma is seen more commonly in giant breeds and greyhounds. Melanoma is seen most commonly in Dobermans, Chows, and Schnauzers. Mammary gland carcinomas are found most often in unspayed females. Hemangiosarcoma is found most commonly in Golden Retrievers and German Shepherds. Again, these cancers can occur in any breed, but some breeds are at a higher risk. Signs that cancer is lurking unexplained weight loss, poor appetite, low energy, gastrointestinal signs such as disruption in bowel habits, vomiting, loose stools, blood in the stool, straining to have a stool, or a very dark stool, chronic cough, abnormal breathing or change in breathing pattern, chronic lameness, increased lymph nodes or lumps, and sores that do not heal, or simply, as we say, ain't doing right. Just something is not right. You can't tell they're changing their habits. They're sleeping in unusual places. They're hiding. Again, mom and dad know best when something's not right. Check in with your veterinarian. Early detection is well established in humans. There are schedules for mammograms, pap smears, colonoscopies, and there are many biomarker tests. There are no established guidelines for dogs and cats although one in four will die of it. So we're really actively looking for ways that we can also screen our pets for disease earlier. What are biomarkers? 
A few examples in humans are, for example, the PSA test, which is a way to monitor for the possibility of prostate cancer. Again, it's, it's not um, as positive PSA or negative PSA, it's more like the levels that are monitored and as they change or trend. Um, there's another test known as a CA125 test, which tests for ovarian cancer. Again, um, trends are looked at. Currently, biomarker tests in dogs are mostly performed on abnormal cells. The typical cancer screening in veterinary medicine would include a physical exam and monitoring of lumps and bumps, baseline blood work, which would include a complete blood count and chemistry profile along with a urinalysis, are general screening tools, and more times than not, they are completely normal in dogs and cats with cancer. Add in radiographs and ultrasound, and you might be more apt to find cancer if it is there, but might not detect it in early stages and hard to find places. Genomics is the study of gene structure and function. Liquid biopsy is a way to detect biomarkers or alterations in the genome that are found in dogs and cats with cancer. So what is the procedure? We have basically in our body normal cells that are dying all the time and parts of their protein and DNA are in circulation. The same happens with cancer cells. The cancer cell remnants are also found in circulation, and this is where liquid biopsy can detect them. Some cancers do not release cells in circulation. For example, the urinary tract, the prostate, central nervous system, the brain, um, those cancers, uh, the cells are not released into circulation and won't be as easily found. So the benefits of liquid biopsy are early detection and potentially allows for a cure. It is also non-invasive and easily added to an annual blood profile. Limitations are that the test will tell us that there is cancer present, but not necessarily the type of cancer. There are a few false positives, but that rate is very low. But comparatively, more false negatives, so it can be less sensitive for all cancers. More limitations include the cost of the biopsy, and it's not potentially covered by many insurance companies. Not all tumors release cancerous cells in circulation, again, the urinary tract and nervous system tumors, and it's not currently available for cats. Physical exams can only pick up a small percentage of cancers, but adding liquid biopsy to a dog that has having their annual physical exams, asymptomatic, just checking in, it increases the chance of detecting cancer to 50%. But what about the more aggressive cancers? There, this is where the test can really shine. With the most common aggressive cancers in dogs, osteosarcoma, lymphoma, and hemangiosarcoma, the liquid biopsy detects 97% of cancers with only a 3% false positive rate. So liquid biopsy could aid in situations where dogs are sick and there's no diagnosis that is apparent without invasive procedures. It may also help with determination of next steps if cancer is determined to be present. Liquid biopsy could be useful in high-risk populations, especially over eight years of age. It could also help with monitoring for recurrence of cancer after treatment. I would also add, if you're going to use immunosuppressive drugs for disease like allergies, you might want to use this test in breeds with a family history and find another way to treat the allergies potentially versus suppressing the immune system if cancer could be present. Cat, moms, and dads, hang in there. Work is being done in this area. Stay tuned for developments in this area. Of course, the obvious is a healthy, clean diet is the basis of a healthy immune system. Don't wait to implement this. Make sure to check in with your veterinarian to monitor your pet's weight, get a good physical exam, and discuss risk factors, and ask about the pet DX liquid biopsy test that is becoming more and more available. I will put information on how to research it in the comments below. 
The area of cancer genomics is a rapidly expanding area of interest. Hopefully in the future, it will be more accessible for cats, and also as more and more take advantage of it, the price will come down. It's currently available for four to $600, but don't quote me on that. It's the best uh, information that I had at this time. Uh, pet owners would likely need to absorb the cost for dogs that are not symptomatic and you're just testing as a preventive measure. I could not find any insurance plans that would cover it, but they may cover it if your pet is sick or if there's suspicion for cancer, but you'd have to check with your insurance company first. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when we release more information on how to keep your pets healthy and the latest pet health news.